Can he hear you? Is he trying to respond? Ask him to blink if he needs help. Ms. Markham is here then, if you can see him. Commissioner Goss? Here. Commissioner Marino? Here. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. Everybody, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry, I had my uh, thing off. I'm here too. Oh. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would everybody please stay standing? Um, I wanted to have a moment of silence. Um, we lost a great commission member, been with us for a year, named Christopher Koch, and our condolences go out to his loving family. And may God rest his soul. Thank you. All righty. Approval of minutes, regular meeting minutes of December 8th, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I hear none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I hear none. Thank you. Consideration of public comments. Those wishing to address the Planning and Zoning Commission need not request permission in advance. Action taken as a result of public comments will be limited to directing staff to study the matter or rescheduling the matter for consideration and decision at a later time, pursuant to ARS 38-431. A hybrid meeting in person attendance, call-in participation, and written comments accepted. This is a hybrid meeting with three opportunities for public participation. One, in person, those wishing to address the Planning and Zoning Commission in person do not need to pre-register, but space is limited and will be allotted on a first-come, first-served basis. Attendance priorities will be given to presenters first and then non-presenters. Two, call-ins, those wishing to address the Planning and Zoning Commission by telephone will need to pre-register by 9 a.m. on January 12, 2020, emailing dwilliams at cityofkingman.gov and provide their name, address, telephone number. They, they will be using email and agenda item they would like to comment on. Once registered, a link will be additional with additional instructions will be provided. Only those who have pre-registered will be admitted to the meeting. And three, written comments. All written comments must be submitted by 9 a.m. on January 12, 2020, 21, by emailing dwilliams at cityofkingman.gov or dropping off handwritten comments at the community development office in the city of complex at 310 North 4th Street. Members of the public can also watch or listen to the meeting live via channel four or YouTube at youtube.com city of Kingman. And do we have any writ written in besides the one email done? No, we just have the one that I placed on your chair, by your chair. All right, thank you. All right, new business. Appointment of chair and vice chair for 2021. The Planning and Zoning Commission will accept nominations and will vote to appoint the chair and vice chair for the commission for 2021. I'll make a motion to nominate um, Gary for um, chair. I would second the motion to renominate Gary for chair. <laughs> All right, I have a motion, I have a second. Any further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we need to, I'll make an, um, motion to appoint Terry again as vice chair, if she so chooses. I'll I second choose. that. If that's what you want, I'll choose, yes. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Have any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. All right, item 3B, minor general plan amendment, case GP20-0004. A request from Kevin and Stephanie A. Wilkerson, applicants, property owners for approval of a minor amendment to the Kingman General Plan 2030. The proposal is to change the current land use designation from high density residential, 17 to 28 dwelling units per acre to neighborhood commercial. The subject property is located at 135 East Oak Street and is approximately 9,375 square feet. Their property is further described as the west half of lot 17 and all of lot 19, block 11, King, Kingman Town Site, APN 303-08-135. Richard? Uh, good, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, commission. Uh, this is a uh, minor general plan amendment to change the projected land use um, of a property on, uh, on Oak Street from, uh, from, sorry, from high density residential of 17 to 28 units per acre to neighborhood commercial. And if approved, uh, this will facilitate the consideration of a concurrent request to rezone the subject property uh, as proposed in case RZ 20-008. This is the uh, general plan map for the area. As you can see, uh, the property um, in question is the one with the uh, star. Um, it's at the corner of 2nd and Oak Street. The surrounding area is currently zoned high dense, I mean, I'm sorry, currently designated as high density residential 17 to 28 units per acre. Uh, we have neighborhood commercial designation on the south side of Oak Street. Um, and then we have uh, other designations within the area. Uh, we have community commercial um, on Bill Street, uh, areas that are designated as public, quasi-public, which include the high school as well as the government uh, complex downtown. This is the uh, zoning map uh, of the area. Uh, as you can see, the property is uh, indicated in the uh, red box uh, on the map. Um, Currently, it's zoned R2, which is the residential multiple family low density designation. There is uh, some other C1 zoning in the, in the area, uh, directly across the street at the southwest uh, corner of Oak and 2nd. Uh, there's a location that's zoned C1, also at the corner of 2nd and Oak, I'm sorry, 1st and Oak uh, to the west, and also another uh, spot uh, east of 2nd Street along Oak. So it's a mixed uh, zoning in that area. This is the map showing the um, uh, streets in the area, as well as the util utilities, including the water and sewer lines. Streets are fully improved with 100-foot um, uh, rights-of-way, full street improvements. Uh, there are sewer lines within Oak Street, as well as um, in the alley behind the property. Uh, there's also a water line in the alley uh, to, the, to the north of the property. A couple of photos of the site. Um, we have a, a residence in the front, uh, built in 1917. And uh, in the rear of the property, there is a uh, block building that was formerly a daycare center. Um, we sent notices uh, to all pro property owners within 300 feet in December, uh, December 14th. We posted the site December 21st. Um, there was a notice in the, in the paper on the 27th. Um, as of the time the report was written, we hadn't uh, received any public comments. We did receive, however, one comment this evening from a property owner in the area uh, expressing some uh, concern over the uh, proposal. Uh, the, uh, we didn't receive any uh, department comments or, or um, 
opposition to this uh, proposal from any departments or agencies. Uh, so this is a general plan amendment. Um, the amendment process is outlined within our community municipal code. And uh, the first step is to determine whether it's a minor or major amendment under the uh, criteria within the code. This would qualify as, as a minor amendment. Um, if uh, an amendment to the general plan is approved, it shall only be approved if the amendment is consistent with the policies and objectives of the rest of the plan and if it promotes the um, or furthers the public health, safety, and general welfare of the citizens of Kingman. So in looking at the uh, general plan policies and objectives, uh, under the land use element, objective three um, states that it, it encourages the com a compatible mix of land uses, which allows accessibility to goods and services without extensive travel. Um, in the growth area element of the general plan, we have a couple objectives that are really related to this case. Um, one is the, that we tried to encourage infill to occur, particularly in the downtown Stockton Hill Road areas, as well as Walpine Mountain Road, to pr uh, promote the most cost efficient and logical expansion of public services and infrastructure uh, in the city. And objective three, uh, is to encourage a planned mixture of land uses that provide for a choice of transportation modes, which uh, reduces the automobile dependency, provides for needed public open space, and creates a sense of place. Um, so the proposal for this neighborhood commercial designation uh, would help to support the above state policies and, and objectives. It's centrally located downtown, and so uh, it, it may serve the nearby uh, residents. Next, we took a, took a look at the compatibility with other land uses in the area. Uh, again, if the amendment is changed to change the land use map, additional funding must be made that the uh, change is compatible with other land uses is existing or planned within the area. Uh, the neighborhood land use, neighborhood commercial land use designation uh, does appear to be appropriate for the areas, uh, for this particular area, um, as this des designation is already in place on the south side of Oak Street to the south. Uh, this proposal would expand that land use des designation to the north slightly to accommodate the proposed commercial development. Um, currently, it, as I mentioned, the block is designed, designated as high density residential. Uh, the remainder of the block was, would stay under that designation. Uh, this would anticipate future multifamily development potentially, including duplexes and possible apartment development within the area. Um, this higher density resident, resident, residential development would generally be uh, compatible with the neighborhood commercial land use designation. So in conclusion, um, we believe that the general plan amendment is consistent with the policies and objectives of the plan uh, and will further the public health and safety and general welfare of the citizens of Kingman and also it would be in, in accordance with the uh, Kingman Municipal Code. Um, the proposed change also appears to be compatible with other land uses existing or planned within the vicinity. So based on that, the planning, uh, the staff's recommendation is for approval to change the current uh, land use designation um, from high density residential 17 to 28 units per acre to uh, neighborhood commercial. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions of the commission. Um, I guess I have a question for you, Rich. Um, sure. is, are there any parking concerns in the area? Um, most of the parking is on the street and we'll kind of discuss that a little bit in the zoning case. Uh, okay. There is a, um, they do have kind of a conceptual plan that addresses, partly addresses the parking issue. And then do we have any responsibility to hear the, the comment that was received today or? I, I can certainly read it um, uh, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. It was actually addressed to the zoning case, not to the general plan case, but. Okay. Um, okay. So um, being that we're in the middle of old versus new, this will still even in, the, in when, when the new ordinance gets updated and approved by the council, this will still follow in. And the only reason why I'm asking that is 
just to address the concern mm -hmm. of the email. It, this, this still falls in right. the guidelines of our new right. plan what, that we've what been we working on. What we would do is, is if this, if, if this uh, general plan amendment and the zoning case that follows is, is recommended for approval this evening, it would go to the council uh, February 2nd. Uh, we also, of course, have the zoning code on the agenda t this evening. Um, if you recommend it, a approval to this evening, um, and talk, talking with the city manager, we we're looking at probably taking it to the council the second meeting in February, which would be the 16th. So we will know um, prior to that uh, whether or not this change would be uh, made or not, and we could make the appropriate changes to the. Uh, transit zones in the downtown area, which will be, be, be replacing these zones so we can make those appropriate changes on the map. So, in other words, it should not disrupt the process in order for this that, to move forward. That's what I was asking. Okay. That's, so, it will, so it will comply with the new plan? The, the yes, plan we would make sure that the maps reflect the, the change. And you said that there is a planning and zoning case coming up it's um, yeah. next on the list. It's so, the next yes. Mm -hmm. And that will be addressing like the parking in the area and. We'll, we'll discuss that as part of that okay. discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chad, do you have any questions? Nope. All right. All right, Richard. All right. Um, I see the applicant is here. Would anybody have any questions of the applicant? And if so, he'll need to come forward and. Alrighty, I see none. So any, okay, I'll open it up to the general public. And I see there's no questions, so closed. So I'll open it up to discussion amongst us. I don't see any reason why we couldn't approve it if it falls within the guidelines of our new uh, planning and zoning and our new master plan. I mean, if it falls within those guidelines, I don't. I agree. I'm not exactly clear on um, what they're changing the names of it all to, but I think that goes to your question. Like, if they change the name of C1, they would put it to the yeah. new name of whatever that is when they well, right. change right. the... <laughs> right. I mean, I'm in agreement with, obviously, that it was commercial. The property has right. been sitting for 10 years. Right. Um, and what they want to open up down there, it'll be a um, benefit to all. And, and I mm -hmm. think we've been working on hard... Um, trying to improve and get improvements for downtown. And I think that this would just be a, a bonus, so. Yeah. I agree. I think we can make a motion. All right. All right. Um, I would make an approach, a motion to approve the zoning change from um, R2 residential multifamily to the C1 low density commercial. Uh, Commissioner uh, Goss, mm -hmm. we're actually on item uh, 3B, which is the minor amendment. Rather than the zoning case, yeah, <laughs> the, the, it's G, the, general. the GP. So you want to pull the motion off? Yep. Pull the motion off. We're on Maria. one. Hold on. The minor general plan amendment. Yep. So you'll need to pull the mo pull okay. your motion off and readdress it. Okay. Yep. I will pull that emotion motion off the table and um, change it to. Uh, I would make a motion to approve the change of the current land use designation from high residential, um, high density residential to um, whatever the new one is. Just state the case number. Yeah. Simply. To the. GP20. To GP twenty zero 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 four. I'll second for motion. I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? No. No. Nope. I hear none. Um, roll call vote, please. Chairman Fredrickson. Favor. Chairman Noble. I'm sorry. I was trying to. Uh, what is the motion? The motion to approve minor general plan amendment case GP 20-0004. Okay, I approve. Chairman Goss? Approve. 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 All right, thank you. 
Okay, item C, rezoning case RZ20-0008. A request from Kevin and Stephanie A. Wilkerson, applicants and property owners to rezone certain property from R2, residential multifamily, low density to C1, commercial, neighborhood convenience. The subject property is located at 135 East Oak Street and is approximately 9,375 square feet. The property is further described the west half of lot 17 and all of lot 19, block 11, block 11 Kingman Town Site, APN 303-08-135. Richard, and if that isn't a tongue twister, I don't know what it is. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Good evening again. Yes, yeah, so this is a rezoning from R2 to C1. Same property we talked about earlier, uh, 135 East Oak Street. And the request again, R2, residential multiple family low density to C1 uh, commercial neighborhood convenience. Uh, and that was the subject of the minor general plan amendment we just all heard. I'm not gonna go through all these slides since you've seen them already. Um, and I'm just gonna go, go down to the conceptual site plan. Um, as there were some uh, discussions about parking on the site, um, uh, this is just conceptual at this point. We will be getting a regular um, submittal, building permit submittal from him um, at some point in the future. Um, as you can see, most of the parking uh, is intended to be accommodated on the street. Um, actually, within our uh, new uh, zoning code, there is allowance for that in the downtown area, um, uh, as long as it's approved by the city engineer. Um, assuming that that, that uh, is approved that way, uh, we believe that parking can be accommodated on the street and within this area. Um, generally, most of these, even the businesses that exist in the downtown area have street parking uh, rather than on-site parking. Um, so within, uh, as far as the analysis goes, um, whenever a uh, change to the official zoning map is being considered, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission shall make findings on the following items. Uh, first is whether there's a demonstrated need for the uses permitted in the uh, proposed zoning district. Uh, the intent and purpose of a C1 district, which is what's being proposed, uh, is to provide for development of very uh, limited neighborhood shopping areas situated adjacent to and surrounded by residential districts. Um, so the uses allowed in C1 include hair and nail salons, which is what's being proposed, offices, small restaurants, such as coffee and sandwich shops, small-scale re retail, such as uh, jewelry stores, tailor shops, florist shops, commercial daycare facilities, uh, to name a few. Uh, the downtown area uh, continues to attract new businesses with the and with the expansion of the C1 zoning, uh, this will help to serve local residents. Uh, and we believe this can be done without diminishing the mixed residential uh, environment of this area which presently has both single family, multiple family uses as well as some commercial uses in the neighborhood. Uh, the suitability of this uh, proposal and the compatibility with the surrounding area and community. Um, prior to 1983, uh, this property actually was zoned commercial. It was actually C2, which is a heavier uh, commercial district than, than the C1. Uh, and there was a daycare and preschool in the site uh, from 1970 until it closed in 2010. Uh, so there is actually a history of commercial use of the property. Um, there's also a historic residence on the site, built in 1917, although it's not within the historic overlay district. Uh, we would re recommend that the exterior appearance be maintained, um, although it's not a, a condition of approval. Um, and to mention the on street park on, on street parking may be counted toward providing the required parking once the new zoning code is adopted and that's common for other commercial areas in the area uh, there is a requirement that a fencing uh, on site uh, i'm sorry masonry fence be erected on the west side of the property at the time of the development between the commercial and residential uses uh, that's a requirement of the of the code um, and also uh, conformance with the general plan and uh, it will be in conformance with the plan as amended uh, this evening. So with that, the staff is recommending approval of the change from R2 to C1 for the subject property at 135 East Oak Street, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Hey, Rich, I got a question. How, uh, 
Why was it converted from C2 to uh, R2? Um, I think it was because most, that particular block was mostly residential at the time, uh, with the exception of this property. Um, obviously, it was a long time before I was here. I don't know exactly why they, they didn't, uh, probably should have excluded this property from that rezoning since there was a commercial use at the, at the time there, um, but it was not. Uh, uh, so I, I, I don't know beyond that. So that was just uh, part of like a, a city function or? I think it was a city initiated rezoning of, of okay. several properties in the downtown area and this was included in that rezoning okay. at the time. And but this, this is like I said, the early 80s. So quite a, quite a long time ago. Um, and then I guess I have a question. Um, what was the complaint that we got today or the statement or? Um, I, I would be happy to read it. Um, it just says, uh, it, and this is from uh, Mr. C Cusick, who is a uh, neighboring property owner and lives in the downtown area. Um, oh, so it's this he, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, dear planning and zoning commission members and staff, it's my opinion that a zoning change for a property centrally located in the area under consideration by LWC, and that's referring to Lisa Weiss Consulting, who is doing our zoning code update, uh, would be incons inconsistent with the process that is about to come to, to a close. I would prefer the moratorium on all permits except for emergencies and maintenance until re the results of the review by LWC can be reviewed and discussed. Uh, the city of Kingman has retained the services of a highly respected consultant to assist the city in identifying and managing its assets in the historic downtown. Uh, this will encourage investment is my personal and professional opinion uh, that it would be premature and disruptive to issue this request for zoning change at this time. Uh, thank you for your consideration, John Arthur Cusick. Okay. Any, any questions, Terry? Okay. I do. I have questions. Uh, again, it's about the, the parking. Okay. Um, so you said that there's going to, they're proposing a nail salon going in there? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so is, it's not going to be a real heavy traffic area then? Is it three, four cars at a time or? Um, it's possibly the applicant could address that, that question. I, I don't know exactly their volume of business. Um, I know that the nail salon, depending on the size of the business, will have to provide some amount of parking. I believe they intend to have at least a couple of on-site spaces, including an ADA space. Um, so it's something we'd have to take a look at at the time of the, their permit to see if they can accommodate the on-street parking. Okay. And um, to this comment here, um, yeah, we did, um, you know, the city did invest, you know, quite a bit of uh, money, time, and interest in, you know, updating um, the code and everything. And, you know, to a, a degree, I do agree with this, you know, but if the change, because I'm not real familiar with the new code yet, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it complies and goes along with the new code, I mean, I don't have any objection. Well, I have a comment or two. Um, regarding parking um, across the street, there was a business that held weddings uh, up until the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. I owned that business. And um, there would be at times uh, 100 and 150 people parking on the street there and uh, you know dozens upon dozens of cars uh, attending weddings and events at that uh, property across the street and it uh, never posed any type of parking issues even for at that scale so I can't imagine a nail salon causing issues also if you look on Google Maps you'll see a tractor trailer parked right along the street there that somehow was captured in the uh, <laughs> overhead satellite view that Google has showing that a tractor truck could be parked there for any period of time and you know a few cars won't certainly wouldn't take up any more space than that for a nail salon I don't believe. Thank you. Thank you Richard. Okay. Sure. Would, would the applicant like to have any questions? You have questions of the applicant? I don't. No? Mm -mm. I just have, um, could you please step forward and state your name and... Kevin Wilkerson. Um, my only question, just to get it out there, is how many people or employees, number one, do you think will be at the facility? And at any, any hour, how many 
customers is anticipated? Okay, certainly a good question. So there's a total of seven employees? Five? Oh, five. So there's a total of five employees, and at any given point in time, you would maybe have um, five uh, customers getting services done by the five different people. So we're looking at maybe 10 parking spaces in the yeah. in an area. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, this is a conceptual site plan that I came up with, and uh, par to be honest with you, most of it's already there. Uh, Rich and I would have to work out a few different things. The ADA parking, uh, my original design was not having it there, but I actually brought, um, I brought a few people from the city of Kingman over, and that's what we came up with, and it, it seems that it would work, and uh, again, this was, you know, kind of rough. I did that just for this particular meeting, but it should, uh, it should, it should work, and we're even trying to acquire the piece of land behind, um, which we would do something with there to, for parking as well, just in case the business were to grow or whatever. But as it sits right now, uh, it, sh it should be sufficient for the amount of business that we're So there's running. property, I guess, would be on the north side? Yeah, there was, it was vacant. It looked yeah. like oh, according okay. to the yeah. map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, the property on the north side is vacant. Uh, and as, uh, as Jason Marino was explaining, the, the business across the street uh, had weddings there all the yeah. time. And I don't know if it still does, but, um, you know, there's <laughs> lots, of, lots of people would go to that and yep. park, parking Absolutely. everywhere. Right. Uh, and, and if I may, I actually had a few things I was going to say about this, if, if I'm allowed to. So um, what we're proposing to do is to take um, an already successful business that's been in business for 14 years and just move it down here. Um, we purchased a property a couple years ago, and it's always been our dream to have her business in a historic place downtown. And th we're just in love with the building. We're going to keep it, you know, historic looking. We might even register it as in the historic um, registry, but I don't, I don't know. That's kind of down the, down the road. But we're really excited about doing this. I've remodeled a lot of things before. And not, not to toot my own horn, but I've won some awards from it, an Andy Award. I've got a Clean City Commission certificate from another one. And the one that we would do on this would be the nicest work yet that we've ever done because this one we actually own. So we have a, we have a very large dollar figure that we're going to be putting into it to make it very nice. And uh, I think it will just benefit everybody down in downtown. I mean, it's, I think the prop, it'll help the property value. It should be uh, it, it should be something very nice to look at. I want to keep I want to keep it um, kind of looking the same way it's always looked though, just with a facelift with new stuff. So. Fair enough. Yeah, any, that, good. any further questions, Kevin? Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Thank you, thank you. and your wife. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll open it up to the public, and I see none. So closed. <laughs> open up discussion amongst us? Um, well, I would have to say I have definitely seen a lot of Kevin's work and he builds some phenomenal things. <laughs> so I think that he could definitely do a lot to improve that property, which is one of our main goals, um, to improve the downtown. Um, so I definitely think that would be a good idea. And also, um, Stephanie does a great business. And so bringing more really good businesses into the downtown would also be in line with our other goals. So I think um, those two things together would be a great addition to our downtown and kind of conforming with the plan. So that's my two cents. I agree. Yep. And I it's agree. already been, you know, a commercial daycare facility, you know, and vacant for 10 years. So we're just bringing, we're putting back life mm -hmm. into the downtown area. So I agree. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement. I'm, since I've been on this commission now five years, it's, it's been my goal to um, get downtown, get it growing. Um, it always bothered me um, when, when you would drive to Williams and you would scratch your head and go, well, what's Williams doing that we're doing? And here's a perfect example of somebody wanting to um, make an improvement, um, make a make a outstanding um, building and, and allow everybody else um, down there to benefit from the business and I'm, I'm on board with it. I am too. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. 
I'll second it. I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? I hear none. Roll call vote, please. Chairperson Fredrickson? In favor. Commissioner Noble? Yes. Commissioner Goss? Approved. Commissioner Shores? Approved. Commissioner Marino? Approved. Motion? Carries. Thank you very much. All right, item D. Public hearing on revised public review draft of Kingman Zoning Code update. The Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing and may make a recommendation to the Kingman Common Council in regards to the revised public review draft of the Zoning Code update. The revised public review draft of the Kingman Zoning Code update can be viewed by clicking this link. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, so this is our third public hearing on the, uh, on the zoning code update. Um, what I'm gonna do is, is just summarize the changes that uh, have been made to the code since our last meeting. Um, these are really in response to um, uh, the hard work you guys did last, last month when we were here for about four or five hours. <laughs> Um, uh, so I think we'll that go almost through. ties it, Richard. What's that? I think it almost ties with one of the longest I've yeah, been on. Yeah, I think it pretty, pretty much does. So, <laughs> um, as we said, we had the last public hearing on December 8th. Um, the, there were about 14 items that we went through. Um, the first item um, was, uh, had to do with the historic preservation aspect of the new uh, code. So um, at this point, uh, LWC and Carl Eberhardt are in the process of developing the zoning code language for our heritage preservation procedures and the historic overlay zone. Um, the language is not currently in the public review draft. Um, as proposed, the historic heritage preservation procedures section is intended to lay out the processes for recognizing and preserving and protecting those objects structures, sites, and landscape features that represent distinctive elements of the city's cultural, political, architectural, and archaeological history. The draft includes changing the Historic Preservation Commission name to the Her Heritage Preservation Commission and identifying its duties along with the role of for a Historic Preservation Officer. The Historic Overlay Zone will include updated historic design guidelines from the, from the current code and the district itself will not be expanded initially. However, this will be possible in future phases. Uh, they will be including though a landmark property designation that will be part of the code update. Uh, and this, this will allow uh, the preservation of the properties of significance anywhere in the city. And that will include structures, signs, objects, and landscape features. Um, so uh, the result from the last meeting uh, is that um, the, we're going to maintain, as I said, the existing HOD boundaries. Um, there'll be new comprehensive procedures for historic preservation, including the adoption of a new, of new historic overlay zones um, and a new landmark designation procedure um, uh, that will allow for expanded preservation of the city's historic resources uh, that will be included in the zoning uh, code update. Um, the historic preservation officer language has been added into the code. Um, also, section the section that has to do with the historic overlay zone has been updated uh, with a description of the, of the existing historic district map. Uh, and then finally, the city of Kingman design guidelines for historic pro properties is an, an appendix uh, within the code. And that document includes many of the existing standards that are currently in the HOD that we that are, are cleaned up and have been incorporated. And as I we talked about in the last section, the, the issues with downtown parking that has been captured in the parking and loading section. Um, and also mentioned that the um, historic um, the HPC um, uh, historic preservation commission uh, will be meeting 
at least we're scheduling a meeting uh, last Tuesday of the month for them to be able to be brought up to speed on all these changes. Um, so uh, that will occur before uh, this goes to the, to the council. Uh, if there's no questions, I'll we'll move on to the next one. Same on Richard. Okay. Um, we had a little discussion about the administrative powers of the planning director. Um, basically, we just went over that in December. Uh, we recommended no changes, and the commissioners at that time agreed uh, with staff that no changes were necessary to that to that section. Um, initially, there was a recommendation to remove the R18 residential zone from the um, from the. We have R16, R18, R110, R120, and R140. And it was suggested to remove that zone because it's a little less used in other districts and the uses are, are basically all the same in all, all those districts except for lot sizes. However, the commission did direct that we not make that change and so the R18 zone is back into the code now. So it'll be carried over from the old code. Good. Hey Richard, on the, on the previous one, who, you guys yourselves will designate um, who's going to be the community de development manager, or do we already have those positions now? Or, well, the bu building official is both the community developer manager okay. and the zoning administrator right now. That is the is a single position. Okay, so all those director and all those those are already covered as it is. It is yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and then following the R18, there, there's also the R15A zone, which was intended to um, consolidate. We have a, a number of, of, of areas there is an R2 PDD, which is a planned development district. But there are all different standards for, the, for, for these PDDs scattered all through, through, through town. Um, so it was suggested that we create a universal zone with universal um, standards. And that's where the R15A zone came about. Um, the suggestion was that we not allow that to occur another uh, going forward. However, if, if someone wishes to do alternative lot sizes, setbacks, things like that, that be handled through the plan development zone process. And uh, the commission agreed to that um, that provision, and those changes were made into the uh, into the zoning code. Um, next, we had tiny home discussion, whether or not um, it was uh, a good idea to, uh, to not allow them on the 25 by 100 foot lots in the R2 if, if they're on sewer. There was some concern over um, whether or not you could end up with a situation where, where lots would be split up and then those tiny homes not, not be, uh, be built on those lots and then those lots become unusable. Um, we did have a discussion um, both here at the commission and also later on with the city attorney. There were some concerns over um, Prop 207 um, concerns, which is basically uh, whether it be a taking to take this particular provision out of the code uh, from, the, from where it is currently in the code. And uh, after con consulting with the city attorney, uh, we're proposing to not make any changes and just let it bring it forward through the new code. So you will continue to be able to have a tiny home on a lot that's 2,500 in the R2 district if there's sewer available to that lot. So anything after 1945 then reverts to the 50 by 100? No, um, it's just if, if you're in the R2 zone and you're on a 2,500 foot lot, okay. you, can, you can build a tiny home if you, if you have sewer available okay. or you're willing to extend it to that property. Fair enough. Uh, next was the um, the section on medical and recreational marijuana in response to the uh, the other Prop 207, which makes it a little difficult for us planners. There's two Prop 207s, <laughs> one from years ago and one just this past year. But the Marijuana Safe and Smart Act um, was was passed, of course, in November. The City Council passed Ordinance 1950, which uh, only amended the King and Municipal Code. At the council under that ordinance opted uh, for the moment to require dual licenses for medical and recreational facilities and will not allow uh, marijuana establishments or marijuana testing facilities as defined in the in the act 
Uh, however, um, it, it, it does appear the council is potentially interested in expanding those allowances once the code was uh, adopted. And um, so as a result, the staff recommended allowing the dual license facilities for medical marijuana and recreational marijuana in C3, I1, and I2 uh, with the same uh, separation requirements for schools, residents, places of worship that now exist in the, in the current code for medical marijuana. Uh, one thing about this, uh, this proposition is you can't be more um, restrictive on recreational marijuana than you are on medical marijuana. So we carry over essentially the same regulations. Um, and also anticipating the council may want to expand the allowances of medical establishments. We uh, would, as defined, but allow the staff establishments in I-1 and I-2 was the same separation requirements. And so that language has all been incorporated into the, into the zoning code. Uh, and then the next section was on the transit zones. And just to give our new commissioner a little background on what, that, what a transit zone is, um, we have what are called form-based codes, which is a, a twist on the traditional zoning. The traditional zoning they call Euclidean zoning, but essentially um, it's use space. You, you regulate the use of the property. But a form-based code is you're regulating the form of the, uh, how you develop the property and the form of the buildings and things like that. So in the downtown area, we are under the new code we're proposing uh, to replace the existing uh, sort of traditional zones with what are called transit zones. And the way to think about it is um, uh, you're, you're, transit, you're, you're, you're traveling down a highway from a rural area to a downtown central business district. And as you move toward the central business district, you're going to see gradual intensity and, and densities of uses as you move toward the center of town. So that's what transit zone tries to do. It tries to um, you know, capture different areas of the downtown based upon the intensity and density of use. And they're gonna basically coincide with the existing uh, commercial and residential zones in the downtown area. Um, having said all that, the, there are a list of uses that would no longer be permitted in certain transit zones that are pre presently allowed in there. Um, and so, uh, if there's an existing use in the downtown area that would not be allowed under the transit zone, um, it would become non legal non-conforming after the code would be adopted. Um, those uses can continue to exist there. They, they just could be enlarged, altered, or extended. Um, and, but the non-conforming buildings can be renovated and updated to pro provide the building will not be, um, uh, the use will not be expanded in the building. Um, so um, that's a long way of saying we, we didn't make any changes to the code, although um, LWC did recommend uh, inserting some clarifying languages, language in there regarding non-conforming structures. Um, uh, and so that, that's been incorporated into the, into the zoning code. Uh, next would be the, we had some discussion on drive-throughs. Our current code doesn't discuss um, drive-throughs or stacking requirements. We have incorporated, the, incorporated that, that to the new zoning code. And um, there were no changes from the November meeting uh, uh, proposed. Um, so that's moving forward as is. Um, we had some discussion on home occupations. Um, and the result of that discussion is that the commission agreed to allow a maximum of one employee who is not a resident family to uh, to be uh, with the uh, associated with the home occupation. In a lot of vehicles, up to one ton that have a commercial registration um, to be parked on the premises, and those changes are reflected in the home occupation section. Uh, and then next was wireless communication facilities, which we we kind of skipped over at their meeting in December, uh, but we did have a subsequent conversation with um, LWC and um, we believe that the uh, section that deals with wireless communication facilities uh, that it provides the standards um, adequate standards for 5G wireless facilities in the city. Um, being and they call it Kingman but the big 5G outside of town 
Is there any fear, if that's a correct word, or plan that city knows of, of any of that 5G infrastructure moving into? Um, well, I'm not an expert on 5, 5G. Yeah, um, I'm not I, either. I, 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 <laughs> my understanding, though, is, is that it typically is stuff that's placed in, in the, in the right-of-way on poles and, and stuff like that, and it tends to be sm for smaller areas. So more likely to just replace probably their existing and, and upgrade it to the, in the existing area. That's usually what's been happening. We have not had, if you're at, concerned about poles or new, new towers, we have not really had any new towers come to the kingdom in a number of years. And uh, when we do see permits, they're usually just replacing existing equipment and upgrading it. So I would imagine that's what, what would be happening. But you will see more facilities, I think, in the rights of way as we go forward. That seems to be at least small cell tower or small cell type facilities, but I'm no, I'm no expert on it. So. Yeah, fair we enough. Have, we have one of those cool um, pine tree cell <laughs> towers in town. I think it's on Airway. I think I've seen it. Yeah, it's like yeah. a palm, palm Looks tree. like a big pine, pine tree or palm tree, tree or something, yeah. yeah. It fits in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we talk palm, palm trees in Kingman. Yep. <laughs> uh, next, archite architectural design standards. This did create uh, quite a bit of discussion at our last meeting. As you recall, uh, we initially had a, uh, a requirement in new subdivisions that over a certain number of lots, you'd have to have uh, different floor plans, some different ar architectural styles to kind of break up the, uh, the I guess you could say the monotony of, of the of the, of the residences in that area. Um, after it was some discussion with, with developers in the area, uh, it was decided that we would uh, not go that far at this point. Um, however, there are two paragraphs that were uh, allowed to continue to be, uh, go forward and that has to do with allowing um, new furniture types that would encroach into the front yard setback areas, including stoops and, and porches that would still be allowed, and additional flexibility for the placement of the home on the site, uh, including uh, encroachment of, say, the front yard setback. You could encroach up to five feet if you have a 20 foot setback. You can encroach up to five feet uh, for the home itself, but the garage itself would still have to maintain the minimum 20 foot setback. And you'd have to have a, a concurrent change to the rear, so you'd have to bring the house forward by, say, five feet. So that'd be one way to achieve some additional design and that's a change, flexibility. That's a change over from what we're not. Right, that would be a change. A, yeah, from what, what we're not doing right now. Also, too, I thought it was just to be aesthetically correct, you know, to have, like, different faces on these subdivisions. I didn't realize that it included floor plans. Um, well, the architecture, yeah, floor plans and architectural styles that, that was the initial proposal, but that, that like I said, is, is now been removed. So the floor plan has been removed. Yeah, there's, there's no requirement yeah, for that. Yeah, because that's going be, to be a huge financial burden on our contractors and stuff. And if we're trying to develop the area and grow the area, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to impact them. Yeah, I just thought it was like different levels, different appearances and stuff. So that's good that that has been removed. Just to clarify, they're, they are not having to do different floor plans. Are you, are you also not keeping the, uh, the uh, different um, stylings of the front of the house, the different elevations, or both? There, there's no requirement that they do that, but there is the allowance for them to be creative and um, say if they want to have a small porch in the front, they can encroach into the front yard. They can have different... Um, Setback, so so maybe some houses are closer to the street than other ones to break up the view. So not every house looks exactly the same as you look down the street. Right. So a couple of tools that they can use to be a little a little bit more creative, and they seem to be open to that. Okay, because uh, coming from uh, a, a large city many many years ago to Kingman, the uh, city there required that there be multiple elevations and you couldn't put the same elevation next to each other mm -hmm. which really did break it up and made it look like um 
everything was different. So then what I noticed here is when I drive around my neighborhood or other neighborhoods that it seems like the same house is repeated 10 times down the block. And so I thought that was interesting. And right. uh, yeah, I just well, was curious about that. That's what we were shooting for. But I think as Chris stated and, and Roger from LWC, they took a provision from Flagstaff, which well, I think was an overreach. I don't think that's what we were looking at. And that's why we got bombarded with all these guys. I think what we were just looking at is wanting them to have a creative mind to change the exterior. So it's not noticeable block after block throughout the whole city. Absolutely. But, so, so it could be the same floor plan, yes. just different a elevation. different appearance or different yep. elevations. Or yes. different colors or yeah. Yeah. textures. Yeah, see, or that's something. good. Yeah, because, you know, we don't want, you know, cookie cutter houses where it all looks well, the same. Well, that's what we right. were shooting for. And but we can't have too many expectations either or it gets too expensive. Yeah, there so has to like be a little finding balance. the middle ground. The, 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 as I explained to Richard earlier, though, the funny part was couple of days after our, our meeting, um, I talked to a framer and for them to change an exterior is really no cost at all, either mm -hmm. by doing arches, you know, instead of a, a square entryway, yeah. arches, an arch window, there's no cost difference. Really? Right. So, there but isn't. Th they didn't like, we, unfortunately, it was recommended that they change, have three different floor plans of the same house and I can understand that. So that's how we got to where we are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thanks. Okay, moving on to the next item, uh, landscaping standards. <clears throat> um, there had been some discussions about the possibility of, of, of allowing um, boulders to replace shrubs or plants. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, we decided not to, not to do that, uh, not to require also landscaping in stormwater t detention areas because uh, of um, possible uh, concerns over uh, flooding, and that would be something we'd probably be best addressed with the engineering department. So um, ultimately, we did not make any changes to that section in December. Um, parking and loading, um, we did uh, add some additional uh, language regarding the improvements for um, parking uh, and parking standards, and that is now reflected in, in the parking area design standards. Uh, and then we finally get down to uh, the subject of, of the billboards. Um, in the version that you uh, reviewed it in December, there was the incentive to remove three static billboards and replace them with a, a digital billboard. Um, however, that incentive was, was, was removed since we already allowed digital billboards. It wasn't there was really no discernible way to encourage billboard removal in exchange for digital billboard when we were already allowing them. Uh, so that was taken out. Um, there is also um, an, 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 an interest in having um, billboards potentially on city property. Um, was mentioned on city, some city properties on North Stockton Hill Road. Uh, commission indicated that they did not want to see that, so that was taken out of the, um, out, out of the code that's in front of you this evening. Um, however, I want to bring up one, one item here. I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to bring up the actual sign yeah. code section. Richard? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I think in our discussion, we really only we're relating to the city property on Stockton Hill Road. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it came up. I mean, if you want to add it along Interstate 40. That know. was my next point. <laughs> um, it, we have, if you can see up there on the screen, we are um, uh, proposing some language that would allow um, it, uh, billboards on municipally owned property by conditional use permit in the RO zone, which is the recreational open space zone. Um, within 200 feet of the right away Interstate 40. So basically, this would open up the golf course, which is, I know there is an interest in potentially putting a billboard there, and although I've not heard this, there is the potential for Centennial Park too. Those would be the only properties that would be impacted by that particular provision. So that was gonna be uh, our staff recommendation to add this, this change. 
And um, we're, we were only concerned about city property on Stockton Hill. Okay. So anything, I think we all agreed to that. So anything, okay. if you want to change or. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what I'll say is that uh, if, if you're in, uh, inclined to allow that change, uh, if you are inclined to make a, a recommendation this evening, we just need to make sure that that language is we reference that that change to the to the um, uh, sign uh, standards. Because really, anything I mean, other than Stockton Hill, all you got is Andy Devine and along by the freeway. So mm -hmm. that's not that's not obscuring or interfering right. <coughs> interfering with anybody right. on Stockton Hill. So. Now, would uh, the city, um, you know, obtain, would they have the revenue from these billboards off of the RO or the OR? And it, well, yeah, it would be. I mean, would yeah. it go into to the city to help the city with the budget and funding? That would be, and, one, that would be one of the reasons to do it, yeah. It would oh, be a revenue I'll agree generating. to that. <laughs> do you want us to make a motion on that? change now or well what, what i would say is wait till let's let's wait till we're done with the discussion okay. and then you have to have a public get to open up for the public hearing okay and then mm -hmm. we close it and then we yeah okay so and the other thing um i was going to mention and this is just it's more of a, a technical technical change that we can uh, we'll have lwc fix we noticed that the uh under the height it mentioned over the c3 zone uh 40 foot maximum and then they referred to Interstate 40 corridor as 60 feet. Um, they did not include the, or we did not include the other zones. So this just, that statement just clarifies that it's 40 feet in all zones, except Interstate 40 a corridor. And then in that mm -hmm. corridor, they can be up to 60 feet. Yeah. Now, what, two years ago, we made an exemption for that. Dumb boulder thing they were supposed to put in that they didn't. The big casino sign that was getting moved going to 70 mm -hmm. feet yeah. is that mm -hmm. expired for that area or in that area does that still 70 so foot? yeah we created a, a, a another category of <laughs> uh, of signs that that would, would allow that sign um that is not being carried over to this new code so no. It, but it's already there, so oh. it's... They, but they didn't build it the way no. they said they were going to build they it. They didn't build it, yeah, no. the way that we approved so it. So what happens with that? What was, well, what you approved was the uh, the ability for them to uh, have a sign on that property of certain size, yeah. of certain height. You didn't approve the specific design that they they had brought before you as the example of what they would like to do. So they weren't beholden to that. Standard. We just approved the height. You just approved the height and the dimension, basically yeah. the dimension, the maximum that, that would be allowed. So is there a way to approve it with the way they say they're going to do it to you? Or if if they make a promise, there's no way to guarantee that? Well, it, it would depend on the, on the conditions of approval, um, but they weren't, they weren't sufficiently detailed enough that we could hold them to that exact design. Yeah, because I thought it was like a refurbished mm -hmm. sign. That's what they yeah. said it yeah, was. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be a refurbished sign, and yeah, and we agreed to the seventy feet because, because there was a, also a dip yep. right there mm -hmm. that took care of the 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 ten feet. So it mm -hmm. was actually only mm -hmm. the sixty feet, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, yeah. and because yeah. they said it was already built somewhere else, and they they were just gonna they were just going to move it, which didn't happen either, right? Fine, we're not better. Okay, obviously. Alrighty. <laughs> we'll go back to the. Um, let's see, where am I at? Somehow lost my. See, here. Chris, our minds are still functioning. <laughs> <laughs> we got this. <laughs> we remember. Okay, so we that, remember when we've been crossed. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Um, so there were a few other amendments in the revised public review draft that weren't necessarily things that we discussed, but um, that the staff had discussed with um, LWC. Obviously, there were minor topographical and spelling errors that had to be fixed. <clears throat> um, as far as substantive changes, one thing we, we did discuss with them um, was to modify the setbacks for pools and spas. 
that are in ground or above ground uh, to, I believe, um, Crystal, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was um, to be in compliance or compatible with the, the building code. Um, so uh, the instead of having um, the standard setback um, five to 20 feet, depending on the zoning district, the side setback would be four feet for pools and spas, as well as the rear, which is already allowed to be four. Uh, that's one change that, that would be made. Um, also, the standards for permanent signs were, uh, were, were not in the, uh, in the transit zone section, so that was uh, added to that section, so now uh, that's included. Um, there was a cross-reference added regarding um, temporary signs that are political signs because uh, the ARS section 16-1019 mm -hmm. um, somewhat supersedes the city's ability to regulate those. So we made a reference to that. Uh, and there's definitions that are updated for murals and billboards to reflect recent court decisions um, and a few other little minor changes. So um, that's, that's kind of the, the changes that uh, we made to the code since you last looked at it. Hopefully you had an opportunity to, to review it on, online. Sorry we couldn't print, print it, it's like 500 pages. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, but I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. I do. Well. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And also, um, Roger Eastman is on, on the line, as they say, if you have any questions of him. Good evening, Roger. Any questions of Richard? Hey, Rich, I got a, I got a, I, it's more of like a favor to ask for the final product is um, like when you're scrolling through the table of contents and the page numbers are 1.2, 1.2, 1.3 uh, is to, let's say I pick on 1-30.05, one, one is that it would take me directly to that section of the or of the ordinance. And then let's say I'm in the ordinance looking at that particular section is at the bottom where it says Kingman zoning code. If I select that, it would take me back to the table of contents. I'm not sure yeah. if you're like- uh, Yeah, I mean, I've seen that in codes before. I'm sure we can, the final version, we can, we can have that set up that okay. way. Yeah, that'd be really helpful for uh, on the online you know, version, obviously. Would, would, would you'll be using it more than helpful. me, but you know, for somebody who, you know, is going to use this on a regular basis, it'd be really nice to mm -hmm. be able to zoom through this thing by just picking and choosing that way, you know? Yeah, understood. Any further questions, Richard? I just have one question, and I guess it's because of owning a pool that was put kind of close to my house. Um, is it smart to put a pool four feet from your house during monsoon season? Are we going to end up with a lot of like home damage? Well, I, I think it's, it's property from the property line, line. Not the house. It's property yeah. line not so the it's house. not. It's not your side fence, your back fence. Yeah. Okay, because mine's like really close to the actual house. That's that's fine. That's, that's fine. but it, it, we're only talking here. The, okay, the, as long the as we're not. Lines. Yeah. Okay, not encouraging people to shove them right no. into their living room. It's no. not a good plan. <laughs> you don't. You don't. What's you got a problem waking up and? It's like swimming. <laughs> All right, I think we're good, Richard. Okay, okay. okay. great. Thank I'll you. open this up to the general public, and I see none, so that's closed off. Thank you. Okay, I'll open it up to the commission members. Um, I have a, a comment um, on the signs. I agree. Um, in the OR along 40 and Centennial, if we could put in, you know, like, you know, and sell the space and create revenue. I agree on putting in billboards well, there. I, I guess not. No. Richard, would it help if we just, if we come up with a motion, just say no billboards 
on Stockton Hill Road city property and leave it at that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, 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 the code that, uh, that's before you this evening already does not allow them on Stockton Hill Road. So um, my recommendation would be to, um, if you, well, you're, you're, if, you if have you'd like, I can certainly give you the, uh, the changes here that are in the code and just ask the commission to, uh, you know, amend it. It'd be well, the reason why I ask is you four. say city, city property along Interstate 42. So I, yes. I, I want to make sure if we come with a motion that's excluded. So the city property along Interstate 40 is available. So yeah, the, the, the wording, and I can bring it back up there up, up, up on the screen for you. Okay, please. So, so the, everything that's in red on the uh, on the sc screen there is what we we would be adding. So, uh, under location of billboards, we would be adding the words. Um, hey, Rich, can you zoom in? It's real. I can't. It's real. Yeah. I don't know if there's something wrong with the internet or what, but it's really difficult to to read. It's all right, Jeff. We can't read it either. Yeah, it's a little okay. small. Okay. All right. Never is that mind. Better? Yes. You haven't gone blind yet. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, you can see it now. Yes, that's better. Can okay. you see that, Jeb? Yeah, it looks a lot better. Okay. Right. Okay. Under um, so you can see the bullet here under the, under location of billboards, uh, we would propose the language um, also allowed on municipally owned property by conditional use permit in RO zone within 200 feet of the right of way of Interstate 40, mm -hmm. and then also adding the language below there for the the height. So that would be the only the changes that we we would be proposing. So if you are inclined to make a recommendation to this evening, would be to recommend the, um, the, the draft, as the draft uh, co uh, zoning the, code okay. with, okay. The, uh, with the changes as proposed by staff, um, okay. as indicated um, in, you could say table, if you wish to table 4-9.060D. <laughs> okay. Standards for billboard signs. Okay. So I'll make a recommendation to approve. Um, what is the numbers on there? I cannot see them. Right here. I'll make a recommendation to approve um, table 4-90.060.D. Um, the standards of the billboard signs along I-40 OR and um, in Centennial Park, excluding Stockton Hill. I second the motion. Okay, we have a motion. I, uh, I, I personally would rather not see billboards on I-40. So just so we're clear, the recommendation or the uh, motion is to approve billboards along I-40, is that correct? Yes. On city, okay. on city, city property. property. Yeah. Okay. Only. Only. Yeah, it's um, O R zone. R O. R O. So I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? I hear none. Roll call vote. Chairman Fredrickson. In favor. Commissioner Short. In favor. Commissioner Noble? No. Commissioner Goss? Approve. Commissioner Marino? No. All righty, carries. All right, Richard, thank you. Now, um, uh, so the last question would be this evening, if you are um, inclined to um, move the, um, the zoning code forward to the city council, or do you wish for us to bring something back to you for further discussion? Um, but we would need a motion tonight on, on the uh, zoning code itself with the changes that you've just uh, recommended for approval. I'll make a motion to move forward to um, 
to present it to City Council for approval. Okay. I'll second that. I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? I hear none. Roll call vote, please. Chairman Fredrickson? Approve. Commissioner Shore? Approve. Commissioner Noble? Yes. Commissioner Goss? Approve. Commissioner Marino? Yes. Yes. Carries. Thank you. Item four, announcements by Commission. Well, Mr. Chairman, before you go there, Roger Eastman, Lisa Weiss Consulting, I've been listening in. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you all and the staff and look forward to the next steps with the City Council. So thank you for your time and your input. I think we have a better code as a result of your work and the work of the public. So thanks a lot. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy thank New you, year. Roger, for all your hard work and helping us make Kingman a better place. Yes, thanks, Roger. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, item four, announcements by commission members, limited to announcements, availability or attendance at conferences and seminars, requests for agenda items for future meetings, and requests for reports from staff. No discussion on any of these items. I just would like to thank Chris, Richard, Gary, and I know with Sylvia, since she's not here, I wanna thank you guys for all your hard work for the last year and a half with all your conference calls I know, and especially the last nine months during this pandemic with the Zoom calls and stuff, working with Roger and LWC. Um, I wanna thank you very much for your hard work. It's very much appreciated. Anybody else have any comments? I have no comments at this time. And Jed, you good? Yeah, I just wanna, I, I think it's uh, really cool that, um, you know, everybody's put this, uh, new ordinance together and we finally got it through. I just want to say uh, thank you to the city staff and all the other commission members. This is really, hopefully this will really benefit the uh, city moving forward. I agree with you, Jed. After 48 years, um, this has come a long way and it's been much needed. So I think the, the city and the citizens will probably appreciate all the hard work put in by everybody. So thank you again. Um, I, need a mo I need a motion for adjournment. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I hear none. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>